Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us. First, I uh, want to note that uh, we don't have uh, our American Sign Language interpreters uh, with us. Uh, uh, we gave some information to uh, be able to activate the closed uh, caption option, which uh, this town hall uh, will will have for today. Uh, we're um, going to jump in in a moment uh, to the sort of ordinary uh, course of business, and uh, we do want to get to questions. Um, I, I want to say a couple things uh, before we, we begin. Uh, first, uh, because of the serious nature of um, uh, getting vaccines distributed and the, I understand the frustration and anger that a lot of residents face, uh, what we're going to do is monitor the questions today. I want to, I want to give you as best uh, answer as we can. Um, so we may not get to your specific question, but we're going to get to a question that covers your specific concern. So we're, we're going to do that a little bit differently today, only so that we can try to give you real information. And I want to start um, um, in this way, and, and I will advise the residents. We've also asked the press, the, the media and the press to follow in today. Um, I know that under ordinary circumstances, your public health department, our local health department, would be the point of contact, would be the coordinator, and would be uh, the uh, sort of manager, if you will, of a public health uh, crisis. If there's uh, 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 contaminated water, you turn to us, and our health department responds uh, with uh, the appropriate authorities. During the response early on to the pandemic, our public health department with our emergency response staff responsible, although directed by the state, but still responsible for making a good number of strategic and tactical decisions responding to that emergency. Um, I, I want to be very honest with you uh, and very clear. Uh, county health departments are not playing a role in the coordination or decision making when it comes to vaccine distribution. We are not empowered by the governor or the state of New York to determine where a vaccine site will be, who can have that vaccine, or even how you schedule that vaccine. Now, I was accused earlier this week by someone online who said, well, you're just complaining. Uh, I'm not. I'm giving you the truth. The truth of the matter is, in, in, in a public health crisis, the law says that the public health departments are responsible for coordinating the response on the ground. That was circumvented. That was, that was given to the governor. The state legislature authorized the governor to really write law, rules uh, and, and to organize this process. County health departments across the state develop vaccine distribution plans. Uh, in fact, in, in late October, we were asked to update those plans. We have today the capacity, your health department with Medical Reserve Corps volunteers, have the capacity to administer 5,000 doses of vaccines a week. We have the relationships with health care providers, one of whom will be on the, uh, is on the call with us, Dr. Cole. Uh, we'll get to him in a moment. To coordinate with health care providers and hospitals and pharmacies, we have those plans to coordinate both the distribution and your access to those vaccines. That is not being implemented by the state of New York. And I know, I know that when you received your email today saying t to you, uh, you have the right to sign up for an appointment, I saw them hit send. And then the phone calls start, and I take the, take the calls here at the office as well. I know that it is, it is heartbreaking, it is gut-wrenching, it is angering, and it is saddening that within two minutes, those appointments are gone. And, and it is because the state has said to counties, your job is only to put vaccines in the arms of a select number of people. So the state of New York says to county governments, even though you're responsible to every taxpayer, and even though you should... Uh, you, you, you're constitutionally mandated to, to, to have a public health role. The state has said, you county health departments, your responsibility is only to vaccinate essential staff and those with developmental disabilities. Now, we've asked for the expansion of those with developmental disabilities because it's a whole population that we interact with nearly, um, nearly every day. And so the state has said to us, you are nothing more than a dispensary. Your job is 600 doses a week. Go at it. And they don't and haven't allowed us to schedule appointments beyond the, the days we have those doses. And we aren't able to create a, an appointment list or a waiting list the way you would see it. So we send out uh, a, an email to you, and, and, and I know it. I, I know how frustrating this is. But just as a note, uh, that email went out today, uh, a little bit uh, before 12 o'clock, and we have to 
prioritize um, some of the allotment. So you're not all competing for 700 shots, but some of that allotment has to go to the essential staff that New York says we're supposed to vaccinate. So that is emergency responders, uh, law enforcement, it's teachers, uh, those and daycare providers, those are individuals that are re we're required by the state to offer. In fact, they're saying to us only offer vaccines to them. We're told not to vaccinate senior citizens. We're told not to vaccinate uh, individuals who might fall in some other health care providers. Our, what the state is saying by executive order is that you must do this. Now, counties across the state are saying, wait a minute, that's not fair. We want to be, uh, we have to respond to all of our residents. So we have to create a system locally that, you know, to the extent we can, give some opportunity to other residents. But we are required to tell you when those appointments are, and then you're competing for them. And it is a, it is just a chaotic mess. And it's worse it's worse than trying to get a ticket uh, to a concert. And I will tell you, the, the thousand calls we received today, uh, the folks in this office are trying to respond to every one of them. Those are the people who at least wanted to make the phone call. The rest of you are home or on social media, angry and upset. And, and I understand it. I do. I, uh, uh, some of the questions, well, why don't you have a better system? Because we are not being treated as partners. We're not being treated as public health uh, uh, entities. We're being treated as a vending machine. You sign up. We give you your shot, you go home. That is not what our job is. It isn't what the healthcare professionals and experts that have been involved in the system uh, want to do. And it isn't what they've spent their whole lives preparing for. That's what we're dealing with. Today, when we sent out that email, just, so, just, to, just to be clear, 150,000 times uh, somebody accessed that page. So it may have been you hitting refresh. It may have been someone else uh, going to that website. But imagine having 700 doses and 150,000 basically individuals looking for an appointment. That goes instantly. There's no one else who can access the, uh, uh, with the there's no preset list. We put it out there. The other problem is that the state of New York doesn't give us a link that is, is sort of um, uh, not shareable with anybody else. So the minute it goes live and the minute you see it, uh, you, you get the email from us, anybody in America can see that email. Can see, that, can see that state link. It's the state's website. So not only are you being told to go there, but anybody anywhere else, anywhere in the state of New York can go to that site, and we are not permitted to deny, decline. We don't even have any access to it. It's simply a database that the state manages for you to schedule your appointment. That's what we're up against, and that is what's so heartbreaking for all of us. And just as, a, just as for some perspective, on the 26th of January, that, so this was last week, we released um, uh, appointments. There were 37,000 page views. Today, today, 150,000 page views at that particular moment. And so um, we get it. I don't have an easy answer. I don't. Um, and the state has really handcuffed us. And, uh, you know, we said this last week, uh, it's, it's early in a game. Uh, you know, if you're using a sports analogy, it may be the first or second inning. We're down by about 20 runs, and the state has kept its best ball players on the bench, honestly. The public health officials, the Medical Reserve Corps volunteers, all of these people who have been preparing and training for this very purpose are being held on the sidelines. And we'll take the calls, we'll respond to you as best we can, but I, I do want you to know this is not something that we created, and we are not put in the position of being able to do much more than give you the information the state gives us. Now, the good news is um, this week, uh, Dutchess County has received the largest allotment of doses we've received uh, all along. Uh, that is uh, 700 doses to Dutchess County government. Those are the ones that the health department is administering this week. On top of that, we are administering 200 uh, additional uh, second doses. So county health department's administering about 900 doses. And then pharmacies throughout Dutchess County have access to 1,800 doses. So you're looking at uh, 2,700 doses being administered county countywide, uh, uh, 900 by county health department, 1,800 by the health department. Excuse me, by pharmacies, uh, and uh, and that's uh, that's what we're providing at this uh, this point in time. So um, uh, we'll. Uh, I think I talked a little bit about why why uh, you can't schedule and why pharmacies and doctors uh, don't have more vaccines. So let me answer the question about pharmacies and doctors. And Dr. Lewis Cole from uh, Caremount is uh, with us. Caremount's one of the largest uh, healthcare networks, certainly uh, 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 in 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 the region. 
uh, but one of the largest in the state of New York, uh, outside of the city of New York, um, and and has the ability and really the infrastructure to be able to uh, to provide vaccines. So first, keep in mind that the federal government, and I'll be very clear, the federal government did not have a distribution plan. They had a distribution, a, a vaccine uh, a plan, a plan to create the vaccine. They put a lot of resources and money uh, toward getting the vaccine up and running. Uh, but uh, basically left to the states the ability to distribute. And that has been chaotic. And so uh, there was a, de uh, a decrease in the number of vaccines New York State received. Uh, that was last week. We're now starting to see growth. This week we expect 16% growth. So in fact, we went from, as I said last week, 600 to 700 doses this week. Uh, the federal government is saying next week that might grow to, by 20%. So we hope to have a, a increased growth, uh, increased uh, dosage next week. But, um, and I, I don't want to put Dr. Cole on the spot in this matter because he's here to talk a little bit about the vaccine itself, um, but, but organizations like Caremount were not even approved by the state for vaccine distribution until last week. Um, Dr. Cole, is Caremount uh, vaccinating folks now? Are you getting any, any doses? Again, not to put anyone on the spot, just wanted for, for the sake of residents with us, um, can, can an individual call their Caremount physician or go to uh, contact the urgent care to get a vaccine? So, hey, by the way, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. So we have received not a single dose. We have 45 practices across the state. Not a single dose for our patients has been sent by the state. I have 26 approved vaccination locations and no vaccine to give out. So as, as an example, and maybe you don't know this off the top of your head, I didn't expect to necessarily go down this road too far with you, but, but how many flu shots would you say you administer um, in, in a year or, or give some, 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 some way for the public to know, um, you know, your role as a healthcare network really is in population health. I mean, a lot of people think your doctor is your doctor, but when it comes to population health and community health, public health departments like ours work with networks like yours to help uh, address a public health concern. What, what do you, what, um, I mean, you can, you can uh, if you want to comment just on that in general, but what, what's the number, uh, would you guess, uh, on, on vaccines when it comes to the flu shot, for instance? So every year we give out approximately 230,000 doses of vaccines of all kinds. Last year we gave out close to 100,000 doses of flu. So it's kind of what we do for a living. Uh, this is not new to us. If they would give us vaccine, we would be, we could probably gear up if they reduced the regulation and gave us an unlimited amount of vaccine. We could probably be doing 4,000 doses a day. Yeah. And, and we so 8,000 8, patients a day. So, so for the questioner who says, why don't pharmacies and doctors have more? It's, it's twofold. One, uh, the state can only distribute what they're given by the federal government. That is increasing. Um, but secondly, the state has decided that those locations are not the priority points of distribution. So let me, let me also offer uh, to residents watching uh, and listening. So when you call, even us, or you go to the, excuse me, when you call the state phone number, you call the state hotline, uh, or you visit the state uh, website, and you want to look for a location to get your vaccine, when you go to that location, that website, you are ne never going to be given a local dispensary you will not be given a local distribution point so if, uh, unless you live in Westchester. Um, so when you go to the New York State website or you call the toll-free number, and I'd like to put that slide up of the uh, toll-free number and the, and the website so you have it, uh, but when you go to those locations and you say, I want to get an appointment at Dutchess County, you know what they're going to tell you? There is no appointment in Dutchess County. And then you're going to call us and say, why isn't there any locations in Dutchess County? It, there are, <laughs> but uh, with limited doses. But the state of New York will only give you access in this number, this one 697 4829 will only tell you what's available at its regional distribution points. And the only regional distribution point in the Mid-Hudson region is the county center in Westchester County. That is it. So when they're full uh, or there's not an opportunity there, they will say you can drive to Stony Brook on Long Island or you can go to Albany or you can go to Binghamton. And by the way, people are driving there and they shouldn't have to. But why is that? It's because the way the state has done this is the state, a lot of people asking if we could get a big state-run site like Albany or Westchester. This is a good point, so I'm answering it right now. So, um, the, sh so, so the state has decided to take that 250,000 doses, those 300,000 doses that they're getting statewide, and they're giving the bulk of them to the state locations. Now, in an ordinary scenario, 
you would give them to Dr. Cole <laughs> and you'd give them to county health departments. Dr. Cole and Caremount would distribute that broadly. And by the way, get to patients and individuals who might have uh, compromised immunity, lack of mobility, and they would coordinate distribution to a good number of people, thousands upon thousands of residents. You'd give the bulk of that distribution to healthcare networks like Caremount. You'd also give a bulk of uh, some, some reasonable amount, not 700, to county health departments. Why? Because county health departments are responsible for providing access to those who have limited access. And so we would be moving into communities like Millerton or Pauling or Red Hook uh, or City of Poughkeepsie, City of Beacon, and we'd be providing access because that's our job. That's our public health. And you'd be giving a larger number uh, to, the, uh, to the federal uh, health care clinics. Uh, 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 right? Um, and, and the reason you do that is because those federal health care clinics are responsible for providing help basically to poorer communities. You would do that. But that's not what the state's doing. And instead, the state is directing a good amount of those sites. So to the question, why don't we have one? We don't need one. We just need the doses. I mean, if we had one here, that just means the state is going to take the doses we have and distribute and, and cut them up again. We have a location. <laughs> we have two. We have one in Dover. We have one in Poughkeepsie. We could be doing today 5,000 doses a week. Dutchess County Health Department could provide you 5,000 doses a week. Tens of thousands of doses are being redirected from your neighborhood, your care mount, your pharmacy, your health department to those regional sites. The state is not going to open up regional sites next to regional sites. In fact, the chaos that's been created is in some places they opened state regional sites next to the county site. In, Onida, in Oneida County, they're actually right across the street from each other. In, in, Utica, in, in Onondaga County, one's in the city of Syracuse, one is in the, in the fairgrounds in Syracuse. That is not coordination, and it is so damn frustrating because, let me tell you, having lost my father to this very virus, the one thing I thought we could be doing right now that would give us real meaning and purpose and I know that folks like Dr. Cole and others who spent their lives trying to help people, the one thing they could be doing to give them real meaning and purpose during a time where everything else is out of our control is put shots in arms. But instead, we have this chaotic, cumbersome system that is so damn frustrating uh, that, that, that you're as mad, uh, madder than we are. And, and of course, you turn to us. And, and we'll continue to answer those questions. So um, we'll, we'll be as responsible as we can uh, for that. Um, Dr. Cole, we did want you on the call to talk a little bit about uh, the vaccine. Uh, so we've talked about this before. The, uh, so the, right now, uh, whether it's the county or others, <laughs> individuals, not you, providing a vaccine, um, is, is likely they're providing the Moderna uh, and the Pfizer shots. Those are, uh, uh, the, the science is, 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 uh, uh, is, is not new. Um, the mRNA is, is something that's been studied for some time. Uh, do you want to, could you explain though, how, how, how then could they have so quickly, and I say with, a, uh, you know, obviously knowing a little bit of the answer, how did they come up so quickly with this, uh, uh, with this vaccine? Uh, and and, and why, why would I trust that if it's so quick? So it's a great question because they develop these vaccines in months instead of many years. The good news was scientists have been trying to create vaccines out of pieces of DNA and RNA probably started 30 years ago. But they, could, they were able to make them safely, but they could never really get them to produce a good immune response. So DNA and RNA are our genetic code. It's what, if they're kind of the framework from which our body builds itself, they basically tell your, the cells in your body to build proteins and the proteins go out and they build structure and they have function. So that's your genetic code. You can take tiny pieces of DNA or RNA, pop it into your body's cells and you can produce proteins and then the cells pump out the proteins. That's actually what a virus does. A virus injects a little piece of DNA or RNA into your cell and then you produce a new virus and you produce millions and billions of new viruses. Unfortunately, it kills your cells to do that. So they started 30 years ago trying to use DNA and RNA. You'd inject it into a cell so they couldn't figure out 30 years ago how to get it into your cell. And then when they finally did, they couldn't get the body to respond. So over 30 years, people kept working at it and banging at it 
And then in the last 10 years, between Ebola and Zika virus, they started doing a lot of work on the technology and they finally figured it out so that they could safely get it into your cells and have the body make a good immune response. And both of those vaccines are being, were being tested and worked on and they just took the very same technology and dropped in the genetic sequence of the COVID virus. So you drop in this tiny piece of messenger RNA and you produce not a whole virus, so it's totally safe, you produce that little spike that everybody talks about, the spike protein that's on the outside of these coronaviruses. So uh, we, you know, there are a lot of folks who have a lot of questions and we, we you know, I, we, we've been advising people for 12 months uh, that uh, Facebook is not a doctor uh, and that uh, social media is not necessarily the best uh, research tool. Um, but um, so, so can the vaccine itself affect a resident or an individual's RNA or DNA? Does it, does it, does it alter it in any way? Nope. So the, the, we've, we've been hearing some really nonsensical things on the internet, and because it's on the internet, it must be true, right? Uh, fortunately, it's not. So it doesn't make you sterile. It doesn't alter your genes. This little piece of messenger RNA gets dropped into your cell and then it breaks down and disappears. It doesn't inject itself and become part of your your human gene blueprint. So based on what we know, I mean, obviously uh, when someone gets, uh, well, when any foreign object is put in your body, you, you could have a, 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 a less than positive reaction, right? There's always the possibility you can have soreness in your arm or something more severe. Based on what we've seen so far, um, uh, is does this vaccine seem to have a, a a, a more severe uh, uh, sort of negative impact, or uh, or is it basically in keeping with with most of the other kind of vaccines we deal with? Right, the, you you will react to it in some way. Most of the time, it's going to be simply soreness or redness uh, based on the uh, uh, based on the shot. But 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 uh, is this uniquely more 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 concerning a vaccine than others? So we're. Like you said, any vaccine can give you a reaction from a minor rash to something terrible where you have trouble breathing and need an EpiPen. We've seen it probably a bit more with the COVID vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer. There doesn't seem to be a difference between them. Most people, if they have a reaction, it's soreness at the site. Uh, we are seeing fatigue and chills more after the second vaccine, but most people feel nothing. Let's get that out of the way. Most people get absolutely nothing. Those who are unluckier get feel fatigued, sometimes chills, sometimes a little fever. For almost everybody, that passes in less than 12 hours. And what it's doing is it's telling your body you are reacting to this vaccine. You are making antibodies to defend yourself. So that's probably the best way to look at it is it's proving to you you're making a response and you're likely to be protected from the virus. But we're probably seeing more reactions than we, than we do with, say, the flu vaccine, which very few people react to. But that doesn't make it not safe, it just be aware you might have one of these reactions. But so, most people don't. So we read a little bit yesterday that, um, that in fact, the, it seems that people are having a little bit more of a reaction to the second dose. What, uh, and in particular, we, we read that, I'll say this, uh, maybe it's for both, but I think we had read that regarding the Pfizer shot that it's sort of like really giving your, your immune system a jump, a real jump, and it's causing some, some, some issues. Nothing severe, but just a little bit more of the reaction to the second shot than the first shot. Is, that, is, that, is there any science to that, or, 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 or did we just make that up? <laughs> no, no, we're, that we are actually seeing. So most people felt absolutely nothing from the first shot other than some discomfort in their arm. Some felt you know a little achy overnight, but it passed quickly. More people, generally younger people, strangely, are getting a reaction to the second. And again, it's the, it's the chills, it's fatigue, just being generally achy. Uh, it's your body responding to this challenge a second time. So you're getting a more brisk response. Uh, it, the interesting thing is the older folks, people over 65 are getting much less of it. it seems to be younger folks, the essential workers who are getting it. That's interesting. Uh, we have a couple questions regarding uh, vaccine distribution. Again, I'm going to jump back to uh, I, this is a great question. Why can't we let people schedule their appointments ahead of time? Because New York State says we cannot. Uh, New York State prohibits this county, every county, from scheduling appointments. We are allowed to, we can only begin to schedule. Now, there's some good news. I'll get to the second half of that answer. But right now, we can only schedule and allow you to schedule 
Uh, once we receive the doses, we're under order. Uh, we cannot schedule until we receive the doses, which, by the way, was, uh, I think, late last night. Um, and we can only schedule for this week's allotment. So we are not permitted to schedule anyone beyond the time we have uh, that we receive the vaccine for the time we, we, we are going to administer that vaccine. That is the state uh, rules. Now, the way we would do this, right, is to have a single point of contact. We think that the best solution should have been, would have been, and still can be a single point of contact. You call a toll-free number, you visit a single website, and you put in your information and are given an appointment. That appointment uh, uh, would be provided to you in the, in the closest location. You shouldn't care, nor should you have to worry about whether or not it was a pharmacy, a healthcare provider, uh, the hospital, or Dutchess County government. You should just be able to schedule the appointment. There's a way to do this because there are actual companies that do this every day. And so we, we said to the state early on, that's the way to do it, right? Well, their system crashed. And then they just said, you, you guys go on your own. And oh, by the way, you can only schedule the appointments once you get the doses for the days you have them. Now, the good news is that uh, because the federal government is now guaranteeing distribution for the next three weeks, we will have the, the ability to allow you to schedule out. We can't schedule appointments for you, but we're, the state says we can't. So we'll, uh, we're hopeful that, that we will be able to get a, a larger window of time where you can schedule. Now, what you should see uh, as soon as uh, next week is on the county's website, what we're going to attempt to do is to change the subscription model so that at the very least at some point soon and, and as early as next week, you'll be able to register your information. And so if you're getting an email or a text message from the county today, we're going to say to you, please register again. This will be next week. And, and, what, and, and because this is important, we want to get your name. We want it, not only your email address and phone number, we get your name. We want to find out what category you fit in because we, remember, we, the state is saying you must, uh, the, st the counties must focus on essential workers. So where do you fall in that essential worker category? What's your age? So we can have basic information that as doses become available at a pharmacy, as maybe Dr. Cole's organization has, has have them become available, maybe uh, the hospitals have them become available, we can say to that population, based on the state rule, here's the information, you can go uh, schedule that appointment that way. We're going to uh, move in that direction, but that doesn't solve the problem that there are still too few doses, too many of those doses directed elsewhere, uh, and, uh, and, and the challenge of being able to schedule. But we're going to create a better model for communicating that information and hopefully uh, provide you a little bit of, of relief. But I uh, believe me, I, I know, I mean, I've, I, you know, I, I may not go on social media today. <laughs> I may not. So if you're tagging me on social media today, it may not be the day. Because honestly, I know how upset you are. I really do. Um, I, this is not our doing, and it isn't the way we would be doing it. And, and, and believe me, it's not unique to Dutch. Second question, can you ask the governor or the state to work on this? Ask? <laughs> I'm done asking. We have asked for se uh, almost, well, we've asked for several months. But since October, just, just as a reference, again, I happen to be president of the county executive, New York State County Executives Association. At the end of October, we were told by the state, update your vaccine plans, be prepared in December to go out and vaccinate people. They did nothing with the plans. They didn't implement them, they didn't use them, and they launched this other effort that, quite frankly, has put hospitals in a real bind because, you know, they're being asked, these hospitals are being asked to do things that, frankly, they've never done, uh, and, and, and they're getting a lot of heat from everybody, right? You think we're not, you're the only ones complaining? We have been asking, I, I, I speak to the governor's senior staff, we have coordinated calls with other, other uh, state leaders, uh, we've done this, uh, we're done asking. Uh, we're saying to you and to everyone else uh, that this system isn't working, it's chaotic, it's cumbersome, and it's causing far too much confusion. And so when you call the state toll-free number and you can't find a vaccine point, you're calling us and yelling at us. I mean, I can't, I can't tell you the number of people say, why can't you have what Binghamton has? Because that's a state site. It's not our site. I had to go to Westchester to get my vaccine, says someone. Why can't I come to Poughkeepsie? Because the state of New York says you've got to go there, not here. None of that makes any sense, and it isn't organized. So here's another example, right? <clears throat> uh, two days ago, uh, there was a question to the governor uh, whether or not he would permit uh, restaurant workers and taxi drivers uh, to receive the vaccine. He said that's a callous thing to say, selfish. People shouldn't ask because there's too few doses and, and there's too many people. That is truthful. There are too few doses and there are too many people, and so there's going to be a waiting line. So what would the mature person do? Well, the next day he said, 
guess what? If you're a restaurant worker and you're a taxi driver, counties can decide if you want to be vaccinated. So I'm going to say this up front. We are not going to do that until we get the information we requested from the state. We have asked uh, for updated allotments every week. Um, you saw me read the, the dose uh, vaccine numbers for Dutchess County on a, on a card. That's because we had to compile it ourselves. Uh, Westchester Medical has helped us, and we're very grateful to Mid-Hudson Regional and Westchester Medical. Um, and, and so we, we kind of compile it. We've asked for weekly allotments so that we know how much is being distributed countywide, and we've asked for demographics. What we want to know is by zip code who has received their vaccines because I can't say uh, to a senior citizen uh, who's living uh, with cancer – uh, or Dr. Cole doesn't want to turn away one of his one of his patients. I'm putting words in his mouth, but one of his patients who might have some severe concern, some vulnerability, some some adult uh, with uh, living with Down syndrome who has a ten time greater risk of dying of the disease uh, than others. We we can't say to them that we're making progress and and we're going to open up to more people because we don't know. The state doesn't provide that detail, and it's not it's not foreign detail. When you sign up for your vaccine, you're in a state database with that data inputted in that database. And that database, just like we do testing every day, you can go on our website, we can update for you and show you where people, who, where the positive cases are, you can do the same thing uh, with vaccinations and the state still hasn't done that. And it's not because it doesn't exist. It's because they haven't made it a priority. They don't wanna share the data. And, uh, and, 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 and because there are too few doses, I think they're concerned that people are going to uh, see the, the, the reality, which is there's too few doses. Uh, not that they're not doing them. Yeah, they're administering the doses. There's just too few with so many people. Um, so uh, let me also say this. Um, people are saying other counties allow further out scheduling as well as New York State vaccination sites. Um, counties are not permitted, although this is the first week that a county government can. And the problem is, uh, so a county government can for the future weeks, and we're going to start doing that. Uh, there is, uh, as I've, I've spoken to the county executives in the region, no one is scheduling weeks out. They're, they're taking your information as we are. And as the doses become available, they're advising you. Now, here's the thing. Some people believe that if they schedule at the Westchester uh, County Center or the Binghamton Center, that that is a county activity. It is not. It is only the state sites. The state of New York will allow you to schedule multiple weeks out. The state of New York, on the state of New York sites, they will not allow counties to do that. We now can project moving out, and we are, as I said, next week going to be, begin the process of being able to schedule based on the federal government's commitment of, of multiple week vaccines. Uh, but they they are not, uh, and 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 not e not before this week. Uh, there's, a, in fact, we have an order from the Department of Health, New York State Department of Health, that says you cannot schedule multiple weeks out. You can only schedule based on what you have. Now that the federal government's projecting. Uh, some commitment in vaccines moving forward will have that ability, but please understand that doesn't change a heck of a lot. It means that with, instead of 600 slots, we'll have 1,800 slots over the course of three weeks and still 150,000 people who are trying to schedule it at the same time. So that's one of the challenges that, will always, that still exists. Now the other is, um, so some people are saying certain groups receive the sign-up link early, and um, uh, and, and, and that is uh, partially true, right? Uh, no, that is not true. No, I'm sorry. That is not true. What happens is we advised uh, certain essential workers that the link would be available at a particular time, not that the link was open at, at an earlier point in time. And that's because the state says to us, by the way, just so you, if you're watching and if you're 65 years of age or you have a grandparent or a parent who you want to get vaccinated, New York says, I cannot give you that vaccine. New York says the County of Dutchess Health Department cannot vaccinate you if you are a senior citizen. They, they are telling us that 100% of our 700 doses need to be toward identified essential workers, the essential workers the state classifies, and in Dutchess County, that's thousands upon thousands of people. So what we do is we take the, uh, the notification that they're essential worker options, right? They get that notification. They're told that they that they should be on alert. That you can you can then uh, schedule. The link is up at the same. The, all the links go up at the same time. Every link goes up at the same time. So at 12 o'clock, 150,000 clicks to access 700 doses. That is what occurred today, and it is what occurred last week. And until the state says we can change it, it's the challenge that we have. No one received access to the link to to schedule an appointment early. They, they may have been notified that, that the link was going to be up at, at noon, but no one was given access to that link early. 
And, and the, the, here's the second problem. As I think I said, once the link is live, so at noon today, 150,000 clicks on that website, that includes the people that are essential workers that were supposed to, were ordered to, to vaccinate. That includes everyone, uh, all 40,000 email addresses on our list. And if you're on the computer and you're living in Buffalo and you want to check it out, you can access that same link. We don't have the ability to control it as the New York State link. So hundreds of thousands of people have access at the second that goes live. And for 600, uh, 700 doses, that goes live and is filled immediately. And that's the problem we have. So I apologize for it. Um, uh, so we had to notify, just as remember, which, so we notified those essential workers that the link at noon would be live, but we did not provide anyone access to that link early. And that is, that is critically important. None of it. In fact, I see when they, they hit send. I mean, the reason I see it is because in about 20 minutes, the phones start calling. It's like a crest of, it's like a, wa a wave on, <laughs> on the beach. But it, as soon as that link goes out, uh, I, we can see how it's populated. It goes from zero to 100 to 500 to 700, and, it, and it's gone in two minutes. And, and that is, it, it's just so excruciatingly frustrating. And, and I promise you, we're just as, we're, we're angry. And we're angry because we're trying to get you the help that you need. We're trying to get the vaccines out. And of course, we don't have much control uh, over how that process uh, uh, under, undergoes. So let's just do the dashboard for a minute. I want to go to our numbers very, very quickly. Then we'll go back to Dr. Cole. Um, uh, first, uh, uh, so after all that great news, uh, 1,301 active cases, 1,301 active cases. Uh, that um, has um, um, uh, been pretty steady. We're in that uh, 13 to 1,400 range. Uh, seems some decline in active number of cases. 140 hospitalizations. Um, the uh, so uh, that's what I thought. So um, uh, so uh, uh, one one thousand three hundred one active cases, one hundred and forty hospitalizations, three hundred and sixty five deaths. January was uh, the <clears throat> January was the deadliest month uh, of uh, of this entire pandemic. Over a hundred deaths in Dutchess County, uh, and we're very saddened uh, certainly uh, by that. Uh, our positivity rate is at 5.79%, 5.79%, which is actually relatively low in these last few weeks. We're grateful that it's down, uh, and, uh, and that's uh, important uh, and good news. Uh, when you go to the, um, uh, the, the, the list of municipalities, uh, we, we, uh, because of the, the, the snowstorm earlier this week, we did have sort of a, a, a bunching up of those uh, positive tests that needed to be identified and, and categorized by municipality. So actually on Monday, you would have seen 890, I think, uh, pending positive cases. Uh, that has dropped now to 167 based on catching up. So I do want to say this. Um, I, 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 I did get it wrong. Um, so two things. Um, if, you are, if you were an essential worker, the essential workers could sign up for their locations, remember, this is not open competition. So there's there's a certain number of doses that go to the essential workers. That did go to the essential workers at uh, uh, prior to noon, but that's for their allotment. So uh, they're not taking the allotment we have to we can give to the public. They're just able to access their allotment. So their allotment. I want to be I want to be clear. I got it. I I thought I had it right. I got it wrong. Uh, so those who are essential workers, so I'll be very candid, those who are essential workers, New York State says these are the only people you can vaccinate. Uh, we basically split it 50-50, uh, and the essential workers get access to their link. They sign up for their link and their, their doses. That is based on the state order. Defying the state order, we then have the remainder, the balance. Uh, we open up to everyone else. Everyone else, uh, you're not competing against essential workers. You have access to then that uh, that open database. And and at that point, at 12 o'clock, everyone, uh, every one of you receive that information at the same time. Two different things. Uh, and sadly, it's the way the state system has to work. Essential workers get notified that they can sign up for their link, their their location. They sign up, and and that's about half of the doses. And then in defiance of that state order, uh, we open up. Uh, the balance of our doses to everyone else. And uh, even though the state says that we are not to vaccinate senior citizens, uh, we argue that uh, we have a responsibility to all of you and we're trying to balance it out as best we can. That is the system as we have done it so far. Now, as I said, the good news is that we can start projecting into future weeks and we will uh, create a system that we could at least begin to schedule multiple weeks out um, uh, you'll be able to schedule multiple weeks out, but we'll still have the same compounding problem. More and more people are eligible, and we're only seeing a certain number of doses. That's the challenge we have 
uh, right now. Dr. Uh, Lewis Cole is on the uh, call with us. Uh, Dr. Cole is the Chief Medical Information Officer uh, and Senior Medical Director and Chief Safety Officer. Dr. Cole, you have a lot of t uh, uh, titles over there at Caremount. Uh, but from Caremount uh, Medical, and we're grateful that you're uh, joining us today. Um, what can you um, tell the public, if, if, if you could, a little bit about the Johnson & Johnson's uh, 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 vaccine that we expect to see probably in the next couple of weeks? Uh, I know they're going to be seeking FDA uh, approval soon. Uh, what, do you, what do you know about that, that, uh, that and, and what should the public know about the Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine? So uh, the Johnson & Johnson and the AstraZeneca, sometimes they call it the Oxford vaccine, mm. are you basically take a virus, in this case it's an adenovirus, and you, they use that virus to inject a little bit of DNA instead of RNA into your cells. That virus is broken, it can't reproduce, and they're just using that virus to deliver the DNA into your cells the way Pfizer and Moderna use this little kind of ball of fat, a lipid nanoparticle. Uh, it's the Johnson & Johnson in particular is great because uh, as Mr. Molinaro said, it's a single dose and that just makes the logistics of getting the vaccine much, much easier. Uh, it's probably a little less effective than the Pfizer and Moderna's, but it's still effective. Right now we'll take anything above 60%. Uh, will probably protect you from severe disease and will limit transmission. Uh, it's much easier to handle. You don't need the deep freeze to minus 76 degrees centigrade the way you do with the Pfizer. And it, it's just much less of a mess. And I think it's going to really be a game changer if we can get it in volume because it'll be much easier to get people vaccinated. Uh, so the, it hasn't oh, go ahead, been in as many arms yet. Right. So, so explain to us, though, uh, to your point, it's a little less effective. But so based on what we know currently for um, for COVID in general, it's somewhere between 60 and 70 percent effective is, is what we're being told. But for severe cases, it's 85 percent effective. What the heck does that mean? <laughs> so the key is with these vaccines, if you get a cold, it's like if you get the flu shot and then you got you get a little bit sick okay but you didn't end up in the hospital and you didn't die you know if you get covid and you're you're coughing and you have fever that's bad but it's a heck of a lot better than ending up in the hospital going to the icu being on a ventilator and potentially dying so our hope is not we hope the vaccines will stop transmission that's really the only way we're going to get our world back and you know go back to having normal lives is is to stop transmission. So it's gotta be effective enough to decrease transmission, but really what we as individuals want is we don't wanna die of COVID. So if it just stops 85% of people from getting critically ill, that's, that's what you're gonna get with this vaccine. Whereas with the Moderna and the Pfizer, it's probably in the mid to high 90s. But it's also been very early and uh, we're hopeful that it'll do better in in the wider world than it did in some of those small trials. So, um, what's the, uh, offhand the the effectiveness generally of, of the flu shot is 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 what 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 would how, how would we equate this to to the flu vaccine? So it really depends on the year. There are some years where the flu shots in the high 80s or 90 percent effective, and some years where they miss the mark and it's less than 50 percent effective. Uh, in every year, it seems to people who get vaccinated are much less likely to die, but we definitely see people who get flu shots some years and still get flu. They get a less severe form of flu. So many years, the flu shot's 50% effective. I appreciate that. We have a couple more uh, vaccine distribution related questions. Uh, county priority distribution, are we vaccinating people outside of 1A and 1B? Are we not vaccinating any seniors? Great question. So let's, let's, let's do this. We have the two charts, the 1A, 1B category. Here's the deal. Uh, New York State says to county health departments, you must only vaccinate individuals who fall within the 1B category, correct? 1B. So that doesn't mean that we would, I should say 1A and 1B, excuse me. So 1A and 1B, gosh. I have to, so the state of New York says vaccinate only the essential public workers falling within the 1A, 1B category. And so for us, what they're saying for county governments to do 
is only vaccinate, only vaccinate. So I have 700 doses. The state of New York says to Dutchess County, to Ulster County, and Orange County, and this, by the way, it's an executive order. The governor signs an order, says this is what it is. So my 700 doses, the, the state of New York says only administer those doses to the uh, essential public workers. So that's emergency responders. It's uh, a fi- uh, well, fire rescue, as a category, fire rescue police. It's uh, coroners and medical examiners. Uh, it's uh, court workers. It's public transit workers. Um, and, and, and school teachers and school uh, staff, education-related staff. That is the population that, up until yesterday, the state of New York said, you are only allowed to vaccinate those people. Now, we have all said, counties have all said, wait a minute, we can't be in a position where we're denying everybody else any access. So we all have attempted to come up with a way to also vaccinate um, individuals who fall within the 1B category. So we're only doing 1A, 1B. We are only allowed to, by order to do the vaccines for individuals who are the essential public workers, but we are accommodating a certain number of senior citizens, 65 years and older. We're doing that in this sort of, this way that, that again, that the state has said, this is the only way you can do it, this open, you know, sort of game hunt for, uh, uh, for a vaccine. That is all we are able to do, and that is all we are doing. Um, And so uh, uh, you you may be able to get a vaccine at one of Dutchess County's two locations uh, for if you're a senior. But yes, we are we are required to prioritize essential public workers identified in the 1A 1B category. Yesterday, the governor said if counties want to, they can also vaccinate uh, any individual who is a, a living with a developmental disability in a congregate care setting, a residence, which we have, <clears throat> which you are prepared and have and are doing. And you can vaccinate restaurant workers and taxi drivers. We have no detail. I'm telling you right now, there's no detail about va- uh, restaurant workers or, or taxi jo- drivers. We don't know any of that information other than what we read. So what the state said is to, to counties uh, next week, uh, you can do, uh, you can only vaccinate essential public workers, emergency responders, transit workers, uh, 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 court to, uh, uh, officers, uh, school uh, and, and education uh, employees, and apparently restaurant workers and, and, trans, and, and taxi drivers. Uh, they've expanded the pool, uh, but we're only likely to get uh, about 70 to 100 additional doses next week. So uh, that is, uh, I hope, a, a little bit more clarifying, but that is what we're instructed to do. And counties, uh, and believe me, the average citizen, the average resident who's watching saying, I want to get my shot, and why can't I get it here? We have just as many people saying, why aren't you giving only this to only our people? And it's just because this is, it's just one, it's, we're trying to balance the state order against what we know is reality. And the reality is we're trying as county governments to do our job to provide for everyone. But uh, again, because the state diverts most of its doses to only its state locations, organizations like your local health department are really relegated uh, to being just uh, small dispensaries. And then organizations like Caremount uh, aren't getting yet any doses and can't provide uh, any any vaccines to their patients, some of whom we know and recognize uh, have uh, significant uh, health health risk and, and ought to have access at this point. Uh, so, uh, if you have some more questions, write them down. We'll try to get to a couple more uh, as best we uh, as best we can. Um, uh, Doctor Cole, we often get the question about uh, vaccinations, and 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 if somebody has been vaccinated. Um, why would they have to continue to wear a mask and social distance and so on? And, and again, I, I think I know some of the answer, but, but why would they have to continue to do that? So uh, remember that these vaccines, even the best, are 95 96% effective. That means 5%. They're not effective. So we don't know yet if someone can carry the virus who's been vaccinated. So I've been vaccinated, let's say. You cough in my face. I don't have a mask. You give me the virus. I've been vaccinated, I probably won't get sick. The question is, can I spread it to the next person that I meet? And the answer is maybe, and we're not sure yet. So we have to continue to be cautious until we know for sure. So chances are 90% of people couldn't spread it, but we're at the point where we just want it to stop spreading. Right, fair enough. 
Uh, and and I know we, we kind of touched on this, but the the reason um, uh, that the Pfizer, why why do I need two uh, two Pfizer and two two Moderna shots <laughs> instead of just one? And 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 is the first dose any different than the second dose, or are they just sort of compounding to meet the goal? Exactly the same. There, it's just basically an immune booster. That's the way they studied it. They felt based on how first animals responded to the vaccine, then human volunteers that their particular vaccine needed a booster. Johnson & Johnson felt theirs didn't need a booster, but you'd have to wonder whether a booster might get them closer to 90%. We just don't know that yet. And is but, that, you actually opened up, a, it's sort of just in my own part, uh, in, in, intrigued. I mean, in theory, right, um, and not, when I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just saying this out loud, right? If, in theory, uh, one Johnson & Johnson shot might be benefited by a second Johnson & Johnson shot. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I've thought the same thing. Uh, but there's also the school of thought that most people after the first dose make a pretty good immune response. The question has come up, should we just give everybody one dose now and another dose in four or five months when we have more vaccine available? Uh, CDC is saying we'd rather just fully effectively vaccinate as many people as we can. But that that's certainly a strategy that people have talked about. So uh, we are very close to the end of the town hall uh, window, and I don't want to keep you longer. But the public doesn't mind, and I don't mind staying past four. But we'll we'll let you uh, we'll let you go. Is there any last thing that uh, I mean, from Caramount's perspective, and, and feel free if you want to comment on on distribution. But what what should what should your patients right? I mean, uh, not everyone goes to a Caramount doctor, uh, but uh, what should your patients hear from Caramount uh, about uh, about the value of the of the vaccine and uh, uh, and, 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 and what might you want them to hear before we, we close up today? We're pushing everybody to get the vaccine. It's, as Mr. Molinaro said, it's, this has been wildly frustrating. And let me tell you, I, I'm on a <laughs> similar calls with every county um, and the vaccine hub calls and your leadership in Dutchess County has really been pushing and has been very much on top of these issues. I've been very impressed. Uh, we want everybody to get the vaccine as soon as we get it. We're going to try and vaccinate the sickest, and or not the sickest necessarily, the most at-risk folks first. We know who they are. As we get vaccine, we'll reach out to folks and invite them in. When we get more vaccine, we will open uh, vaccine clinics to the public. We're ready to go with two if, and maybe three vaccine clinics in Dutchess County alone. And if there's enough vaccine, we'll vaccinate in every one of our offices. So we'll start with our patients, but we also would love to open up to the public. Um, so in case anybody's thinking, there's these are free vaccines. So, you know, you don't have to worry about ability to pay. Uh, it's a public service. So if we would just love, love to have enough vaccine to do that. Well, Dr. Lewis Cole, Chief Medical Information Officer, Senior Medical Director and Chief Safety Officer, uh, he's right. We've been on calls together. Uh, I've certainly uh, heard as well uh, Caremount's plea uh, to be a part of the solution, um, and, and we, we agree. Uh, we appreciate your time today. I know that you all are very, very busy. Um, you know, I, I will say this. Um, uh, my, uh, some of my children and uh, my uh, wife and I, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're patients uh, with different uh, physicians at Caremount, and what I will tell you is every one of them has said the same thing to us, which is we, we want to be a part of the solution. <laughs> we want to help get vaccines in the arms of the people who need them. Let me just ask you as a close up with you, and I apologize. Uh, you said that you just said you're, you're going to start with the most vulnerable and work from there from a scientific perspective, right? It's from a doctor's perspective. Isn't that the way it, it ought to be, sort of focus on the most vulnerable and expand from there? I know that, that, that when we do these public health things, uh, there's other influences, but is that sort of, you know, I know it sounds pretty pretty uh, common sense, but uh, is that is that the approach that, that ought to be taken? Yeah, I think it's just it, it's an ab there's an absence of common sense right now. Yeah, you start with the most vulnerable most vulnerable people, you protect them, and you work your way out from there. And obviously, the essential workers who we need to be able to go into a variety of situations and face COVID every day. And you start from there, and as vaccine becomes more available, you spread. Yeah. Um, so it, we should we need to take the politics out of vaccine distribution. I'm I, I'm the first to agree with you. I believe me as a, a political person myself. I'd much rather this be based on on, on real science uh, and and prioritizing in that way. Dr. Cole, thank you. Please extend our very best to the entire Caremount team. We're very grateful for the work we do together. And and by the way, we we this county government uh, has been thrilled to work with you. 
uh, before this pandemic, we've worked on a number of community health projects, uh, worked uh, uh, in a number of ways on substance use disorder uh, and, and other public health issues. Uh, and we're just grateful for the partnership we have with Caramount. So extend our best and we appreciate it. Maybe we'll have you back. Uh, we do these every week. So if you're looking for something to do, you know. <laughs> Let me know. I'm available. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank Be you. Well, everybody. Uh, you as well. Uh, so uh, for those uh, still with us, um, I do want to address uh, one question was a timeline for vaccinating uh, senior citizens uh, in the county. The truth is uh, this, the, uh, the, 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 the fact that we have so few doses coming into the state and then into the regions, um, the state <clears throat> doesn't have a timeline. So there are about 100,000 senior citizens or I should say individuals 65 years of age and older, about 100,000 of those residents in Dutchess. Um, just as a reference point, uh, if, um, you know, if, if Dutchess County's uh, administering 700 doses to 100,000 people, that's going to take some time. Uh, keeping in mind that Dutchess County government is, is ordered to uh, give doses to the essential public workers as defined by the state of New York. Uh, so uh, even that number that we're distributing from the health department is even fewer uh, than, um, uh, than the 700 we get. So uh, at this moment, uh, you know, uh, right, as I said today, uh, this week is, is the most, uh, we have the most vaccines in the county uh, a, a, ever uh, in, in this uh, six or seven week process. We're at about 2,700 total uh, vaccines. As I said earlier, that includes pharmacies, healthcare or hospitals, uh, the county of Dutchess itself, and some other uh, other other unique providers, uh, and um, again, each is responsible by the state order for a certain segment. And just as a reference, uh, pharmacies, right, uh, are are ordered uh, to only administer to senior citizens, and county governments are ordered not to administer to senior citizens. We try to obviously coordinate that, um, but the state has not made that uh, a possibility. So. Uh, we're going to be back with you next week. Uh, we tried to cover as many, so again, I, we didn't do question by question, and I appreciate your patience with that. We just felt that today was probably better for us to kind of get a feeling and a sense of each of the questions and answer them. So if Mrs. Jones is on the on the line looking for her specific questions answered, I don't know, is there Mrs. Jones? Uh, then we didn't do that this that way this week. Uh, we'll get back to that. We just felt today uh, was just overwhelmingly frustrating for everyone, uh, and we wanted to get to the sense of most questions. Uh, we will be back with you next week, uh, and we ask you uh, to to work with us. Uh, we uh, we're trying our best at the county government level. We just don't have any uh, authority over this process. We are really at this point by the state treated nothing more uh, than simply uh, a very small dispensary. Uh, and as I said, 700 doses this week to 150,000 uh, clicks on our website uh, go instantaneously, and uh, uh, we are sorry for that. We're hopeful that we can come up with a system that the state will permit us to implement. Uh, as soon as next week, but uh, we'll keep you posted. And uh, in the meantime, uh, please stay healthy. Uh, please continue to follow those mitigation steps we've talked about all along uh, and uh, attempt to our very best to be kind to each other. Thank you.